Hello. If you've watched all of my videos carefully, you will know that the very uh, specification for CD audio and therefore the audio we still use today in, in uh, streaming services was based on the capability of these video cassettes. Because in the early days of CD mastering, there was no way of recording the amount of data uh, onto a hard disk that uh, was necessary to make up a CD. So they'd um, encode it and record it on U-Matic videotape. And the earliest machine that was commonly used was called the PCM 1600. There was a 1610 and a 1630. The 1610 uh, was probably one of the more popular ones and I have one of those. Uh, but later they were finding problems with that, that there were errors. Uh, there was no sort of recovery. If there was a tiny dropout on the tape, uh, it would cause an error and you'd have to rerun the tape or work around it. So later they came up with a system, RAR they called it, read and read, where they'd have two sets of video heads scanning over the data, record it onto, uh, play it back onto two channels and use the PCM1630 decoder to read both of those and do error correction and wonderful things to fix errors. Yes, it didn't work. But anyway, that was the idea. So the PCM1630 was the decoder to have if you could. And there were special video decks designed for use with this. You could use an ordinary NTSC, uh, that's to say American TV system, uh, UMATIC video recorder, but it wouldn't be optimal. Uh, they made a DMR2000, which was very uh, well suited to this uh, and would be typically used with a PCM1610. And then for the 1630, where you needed those extra heads and extra channels, they had the DMR4000. And I have two of those machines downstairs in my studio. I also have a PCM1610, as I've mentioned, a PCM1630 down there that's fully working, but we also have some equipment here. So let me tell you a little bit about this and what we're going to be working on today. Some time ago, about a year or more ago, um, I collected this PCM1630 from a warehouse near London. And I went there with uh, someone I, I now know quite well, uh, Joe Caithness, who's an audio mastering engineer. And he took one 1630 and I took the other. I took this one and it doesn't work. I tested this in a previous video and I couldn't get any life out of it. And he took that one, but he couldn't get that to work either. So I finished up with both of them. <laughs> we also have this uh, thing, which is not built by Sony, but is some kind of um, duplicating box and contains some of the same cards as this. I'm not intending to use this machine, but if we need some of the cards, we can do so. So it's my plan shortly to go into the studio and connect these up to the DMR4000 and see what life we can get from this one or this one, which I've already tried and didn't work, or some combination of card swapping. Let's just remind ourselves what's inside these. Right, what I'd said earlier was wrong. I think this is the machine which I'd originally brought back because mine did not have the RAR card, which is what you need for the read and read feature. So that was optional. Whereas this one that I collected a few weeks ago from Joe, K Joe Caithness, this one does have that card. Whereas mine, my original one here has, well, it was a bit missing from here, but let pull thing is missing but this one has another card here marked DA is that digital to analog is it that's analog to digital so I think what I might like to do is put as many of the cards as I can in this one and see if it works.
Okay, that's as fully populated as it can be, I believe. We'll also have a look in this uh, box up here. Okay, these cards are not necessarily located in the right place, but we have SIF, which is that one, encoder, that one, and decoder, which is that one. So we have spares of all those three cards if they are required. Now, it should be noted that these uh, produce analog outputs and a digital output in a weird format. So we're used to SPDIF, Sony Philips uh, digital interface, but these use the uh, output a Sony special SIF uh, signal, which has three cables, data for left, data for right, and clock. Uh, so not very much equipment can access that kind of digital format, but I do have some decoders that can do so. So with this system, I can do a pure digital transfer from these digital audio umatic tapes. Right, let's uh, see if I can get this one set up, plugged into where we have a known working system and see if it will work. Okay, let me start by showing you what I'm going to be testing with. I have a DMR4000 uh, umatic machine here, which is the one that has the RAR function. And over here, we actually have another DMR4000. That's also in good working order. And the PCM1630 decoder. I'll try and get you a better view of that. So here is our PCM1630 decoder. This one uh, has the RAR card and is all connected up presently to this player. I could have connected to that one, but just for convenience, I want to use this one. So let's pop in a tape. This I know has plenty of errors on this tape, but let's just play it. We are getting errors here from time to time. So that's to be expected. And we have this RAR function, which means it should be using both channels. But why it's got A lit there and not B as well, I don't understand that. That implies there's nothing on B, doesn't it? I don't, I've never really understood that. But um, anyway, RAR is lit. We are getting errors, but that is absolutely normal for the format. So let's now uh, connect that up to the um, PCM1630 that we're trying to test. So it has A and B channel cables, so uh, we'll connect those up to the uh, other PCM1630. Okay, I'm ready to test it. Excuse the rather ugly angle, I just didn't have enough cable length to put it down flat and be able to get it in view of the camera. So we can now switch this on. The other one doesn't do that flashing LED thing, but that might be normal. Let's hit play on here. Something's going on. So it looks like we're seeing CRC errors, but it's in mute. There's definitely some activity, but it's in mute. Why? Oh, that the flashing because that's in fine. Switch that to normal. There we are. That solves that problem. Auto level. Okay, that's cleared a few silly things. Monitor playback. Aha! Well, it's sort of working, but millions of errors. On the same tape as it's playing fairly well on the other one. Why would that be? I'm going to check these switch settings compared to the other one. Let's try switching over the decoder board. I mean, the problem is not going to be metering. It's not going to be the RAR because that's optional. Decoder, I think, that's serial interface. Encoder, that's for recording. Don't care about that. These are I.O. cards. So I think the decoder board is the most likely cause, if it's any of these boards. 
So let's borrow the one from the known good machine. And that's working. That all appears to be working. I don't know why the mute light's on. That might be just a setting I've got wrong. But uh, I think that pretty much proves that the fault lies in this uh, decoder board here. There's a few capacitors that are worth checking, not many, so that should be doable. Let's just refit this and confirm that the fault comes back. Okay, I've refitted its original decoder board. Sorry, that one. And the sound is distorted. It sounds like there's a, a bit missing or something. There's definitely a, a fault with that decoder. Let's try the uh, one from the other PCM1630 uh, that I got from the same location. Okay, so we'll take out this known defective decoder board. and fit the one from the set which I had previously. Okay, what do you think? Will it work? Will it be the same? There it goes. Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Right, so we now have another PCM1630 alive in the world. But I'm not going to leave it at that. I will have a look at this board and see if we can fix it. Well, I've been checking through some of these capacitors on this decoder board. I mean, that's supposed to be 100 microfarad and it's 92. Yes, a little bit low, but it's not a smoking gun. I've been through all of these, or nearly all of them. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything that's uh, bad enough to stop the board from working. Two things. These chips here, it looks like half a CD player. I suspect we've had failure of something like one of these chips here. Um, now, you could say this probably doesn't actually matter because if this is the digital to audio decoder and my plan is to use the machine only for pure digital extraction then likely most of this has been bypassed so it might be that I could ignore this problem but I'm not I'm not going to run with this card in in the machine uh, it's obviously much better to have a fully working decoder board so I'm going to put that to one side for a minute but there was also this uh, mystery box we had this mystery box now these boards may not be in the right sequence but there is a decoder board so let's pull that out oh i don't like those uh, bodge wires this has a lot of bodge wires let's compare it to the one that came out there's a few bodge wires but not so many some of them are flapping about on the board a bit. Oh, and they come to this. Well, it's Sony. It's nothing to do with the fact that it's in this strange box and it's been somehow um, hacked up. This, oh, look, there's a an upside down IC there with loads of wires going out to this. Oh dear, what a mess. So um, let's have a look at the revision, if we can, of these two boards. Looking at them, they appear to be the same revision level, I believe. It says deck 15, and the numbers there are the same on both boards. Some of the bodges are the same, so this bodge here is on both. 
that this one has this whole extra IC added. So, uh, well, let's hope that that doesn't in any way prevent this from operating as it should, and I'm sure it won't, uh, in the PCM1630. So I'll give this a whirl in the PCM1630. Okay, so let's try this decoder board with these horrible bodge wires in that slot. Oh, that's strange for a start. It's sitting there with things stuck on the meters. I don't like the look at that. I'm not sure this is going to work. Oh, so it works. But if I hit stop, what the? Now that could mean it's leaving large DC uh, values on the digital outputs. Uh, which would be bad. So it works. Let me just check the sound quality. Yes, it's working fine. It's just that when you stop it, it does that. So um, that's very odd behavior. Let's switch back to the decoder board that came from the uh, other 1630. Right, you see that's gone back to zero. That sounds fine. And we're not getting that weird behaviour. Okay, I much prefer that one. Let's call this working. I'll put the front back on there and then we'll go to have a look at the uh, digital output side of things. Now we have mentioned before the problem with these things is that they output um, a strange early digital audio. Let me show you the connectors. So looking at the back of the PCM1630 we've got three outputs. Uh, channel 1 and channel 2 or left and right decoder out and word sync out so those three need to go to some sort of converter box to convert it to a more modern digital format that we can handle and you can see the inputs to the PCM1630 here are composite digital A and B so they're the A and B channels from the two uh, read heads on the DMR4000 Right, so one consequence of course of connecting the channels like this is entirely possible to get your left and right channels back to front and it wouldn't know any better. And uh, what we're going to connect it all to is this. It's a sample write converter but the important thing is it supports SDIF in which is that three connector system and it can do AS or SPDIF out. So uh, let's hook this up. So SDIF in channel one, I'm making sure I do get them the right way around. Channel two and word sync. Okay, so there are our, our three connectors. I've got power on this. So now I want to pick up the uh, SPDIF output. SPDIF out. And our SPDIF out is going to go to digital in of this Tascam recorder. And I have to say that uh, the menus on this really could be a lot better. I have to go through some horrible menu in order to select digital input. Remote in digi in function digi in. What a horrible way to do it. Okay, so let's tell it that the input should be SDIF, or oh, I think it knows that already. 44.1, how do we change that? Not sure. Let's stick to 44.1, please. And out wants to be SPDIF. 
Okay, so we have audio playing through the system. Why is this, so the sample rate in is 44 rather than 44.1? I don't know. But the digital audio recorder seems to be happy. I'll uh, set that into record. It momentarily went into DIN unlock, but it might just be that I jiggled the cable. So I'll leave that recording for a moment. I think that's 44.056 on these. But uh, so that's uh, working reliably. We have a, another system here that can capture um, digital audio from these tapes and give us a pure digital copy. You do have to be a bit careful that when pre-emphasis is enabled, which I think is by default, so an emphasis is on here, that means we have to do de-emphasis in the digital domain using the book curve, which is pretty straightforward with audio editing software such as Audacity. Right, that's wonderful. We have one more PCM1630 kit alive in the world. Uh, I wonder what this is. What do you think it was? This is the thing that's got these, uh, well, had three cards in it, but one of them's presently out. So we have the decoder, encoder, and SIF. What would this have been used for? Let's look at the connectors at the back. So we've got in and out, one, two, W, word clock and video. In and out, word clock and video. What was it used for? Now, if you look up some of my other YouTube videos, you'll see that I've also featured the usually Betamax-based prosumer level PCM F1, 501, 601, and 701 uh, decoders. And the 601 has a pure digital output, and you'll see that I've added pure digital outputs to some of those other models too. Uh, they also have to go through the Red Book uh, de-emphasis curve, but they have a complication that if you're using them in the digital domain, the samples of the two channels are half a sample out. So you get a tiny, almost imperceptible uh, delay between one channel and the other. And ideally, uh, you'd want to capture the audio at double sample rate, 88.2 kilohertz, and then you can relatively easily correct the uh, sampling error by one of those 88.2 kilohertz uh, samples but i don't have any equipment to do that i have my ssr 250n digital audio recorder and it can do higher and lower sample rates but won't do 88.2 i've asked tascam if they'd like to do a firmware mod to add 88.2 but uh, i don't think they're going to do that so i do have that sort of uh, weakness uh, in that format at the moment now another decoder I have, as well as a PCM1610 and 1630, is a model PCM100, which is also intended to be used uh, with Umatic equipment, but it records in a different format. It might be compatible with the Betamax-based PCMF1 type format. Don't know. Does anybody know? I could try it anyway. Uh, it's one that's got an LCD sort of VU meter, and the LCD doesn't work, and they never do. What? Does anybody know about the PCM100? It's a difficult product to look up because its model number is too similar to a relatively modern handheld Sony digital uh, audio capture device. So it could be a bit hard to find any information on the PCM100. Now, while I've been creating this video, uh, I actually had an email from Maxim Kryukov. Hmm, probably got that wrong. Also known as Fagear. And he has uh, the STC007 software decoder. So what that's intended to do is if you can do a high quality video capture of the uh, image that's recorded on the Betamax type PCMF1 or this Umatic uh, PCM1610-1630, if you can get a good video capture, it can decode the audio from that video capture. There are some complications around this. It needs to be very good video capture. There are problems that the top few lines tend to be missed out of normal video capture, and that loses some of the data. There are other problems too. So it's not easy, but it is something that potentially could help to dispose of having to get hold of all this really complicated, uh, expensive and difficult to obtain and maintain uh, 
PCM1610 and PCMF1 type uh, decoders. So I'll provide a link below. The software is available on GitHub. He says that the interface isn't very polished yet and the WAV file generation is slower than they would like it to be, but it's out there and available to try. And if it becomes really good, in theory, it could put my entire PCM digital audio capture um, business out of business. But I suspect there's going to be room for people to still use the original hardware to do this. Uh, but you tell me if you can get it to work and uh, if you think it's uh, useful. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed all this uh, messing about with uh, PCM digital audio equipment. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.